Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar this month. We'll be talking about the LABBC Innovation Awards, answering some common questions about the process to nominate a project, how the projects are evaluated, and uh, what makes our awards unique and how we collaborate with our partner organizations. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Dave Hodgins. I'm Executive Director of the LA Better Buildings Challenge. As usual, uh, the line uh, will be muted to keep things orderly and get a good recording, which we will post on the website and also circulate via email to everybody. Please do ask questions. We hope today will be an interactive session. If there are any questions that come up, please do end the, enter those um, at the end of the webinar via the chat box and we'll make sure that we cover them. Uh, this is the fifth annual Innovation Awards. Um, I can't believe it's already been uh, five years that we've been doing this. Nominations are open now and run through the end of the year. And before I go into the categories and the criteria, I just wanted to talk about definitions. Um, because so often people think about innovation, they think technology, they think um, really about what's uh, the equipment or software. But really, when we talk about innovation, we're talking about innovation in collaboration, innovation in operations, innovation in commitment, and the culture of the organizations that commit to reducing their energy and water use and sustaining that over time and continuing to raise the bar. So technology is part of it, but really it's about people. This is the official award of the City of Los Angeles for High Performance Buildings. And this, again, is really about recognizing the leadership and the commitment to innovation that's demonstrated by the projects that, that come through this process. Um, it's been really fun year over year to see how competition continues to get um, more and more lively. We'll say it's always exciting to see who comes out ahead, and we'll talk more about um, some past winners, what stood out about those projects, and how to shape a really strong nomination. And, and uh, it's not always the biggest, shiniest project that wins. Um, innovative projects can come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, last year's winner, pictured here, Museum of Contemporary Art, not a huge facility. Uh, one energy efficiency project of the year. Um, another prior winner was a cold storage company, RW Zant but really exceptional in the way that ownership committed to their employees, even sharing a portion of the energy savings, financial energy savings dollars with their employees because they were bought in to that culture of innovation and, and reducing energy and water use. I want to thank our collaborating organizations. You see them listed here. The, the, the leadership of these organizations not only commit to helping promote the Innovation Awards and encourage their members to nominate, but they also serve as judges. And it's this really diverse perspectives that our judges bring that makes this fun and makes this interesting. Um, we, you see leadership from the utility side, but also from academia, the nonprofit world, and very importantly, commercial real estate, bringing that perspective of an understanding what's possible to do and what is the market context in which these projects are happening. And so um, I think our judges enjoy that process too, the exchange that happens as we're going through the scoring of the projects because each of them you know, brings a different perspective. I'll get into the, the scoring sheets and what that looks like and how they're used a little bit later, but it's really this diverse perspective and the collaboration that makes this unique and fun. So a bit about the nomination process. It is very quick and easy, as you will see. This is the, uh, the second screen of the nomination form. The first screen just asks uh, for contact information. Uh, you see there are five categories. We'll talk more about those. So you select which category are you nominating for. Um, anybody can nominate a project. So if you are a contractor and you've worked on a project and you think that your client really deserves recognition for that, but they maybe hadn't heard about it, you can nominate them. Owners and managers can, of course, nominate themselves. Um, and, of course, the owner has to accept that nomination. Not everybody is necessarily interested in the type of recognition we're offering. Um, so uh, th that is the process. 
Um, then we just ask for some very brief information. So this process should only take about five minutes um, to complete the nomination process, that is. We ask for your Energy Star Portfolio Manager username so that we can connect with your account and with read-only access, we can look at the savings that you've achieved over time. And that's how uh, we're looking at the reductions is through Energy Star Portfolio Manager. Um, everybody, I think, is pretty familiar with that. It's now a, a requirement, annual benchmarking through the uh, existing building's efficiency ordinance. So that's how we look at the energy and water performance. Then just a very brief description, two or three lines on what you did in 2018. Um, I want to underline that this doesn't have to be major capital projects. Um, we definitely understand that uh, projects are often phased out over multiple years, and also, you know, optimization, operational improvements, or behavioral changes, tenant engagement, that all counts. So we want to know briefly what happened in 2018. Was it, um, a, you know, tenant engagement campaign, or was it, you know, a central plant retrofit, addition of controls, et cetera? Um, not just about 2018, though, it's showing continued improvement over time. I think back to that idea of, of innovation and commitment is that sustained effort, that continued commitment to find efficiencies, to continue to optimize. So we'll look at everything that's been um, completed prior to 2018 as well. And, uh, and of course, looking at um, water as well as energy. So in this example, this is for um, this is for the category that's asking for both of those. It's not the only award out there. I'll talk more about what makes it unique. As I said, this is the city's official sustainability award for high performance buildings. Um, you may be participating in some other reporting frameworks like GRESB or going after a BOMA Toby Award, very prestigious, long-standing award, um, or the USGBC Sustainable Innovation Award. We're not duplicating any efforts here. Um, without reading through all of this, we have compared a side-by-side, -side, so you can see if I'm applying for a Toby or if I'm applying for a USGBC Award, I'm already preparing a lot of information. Well, you can reuse that, and we actually ask for, for less information because our awards focus specifically on energy and water efficiency. Um, Toby's go beyond that. Uh, energy and water efficiency are part of it. Um, same with USGBC's award. They go beyond just efficiency. So we're focused on those energy and water performance upgrades um, exclusively, but you can reuse a lot of the content that you've um, pulled together for those other awards. So um, you can go for more than one and uh, not have a lot of additional work to do. So again, what makes the LABBC Innovation Awards unique is that this is the mayor's official award for high performance buildings. It's focused, as I said, on existing buildings, energy efficiency and water efficiency. Our panel of expert judges really makes this fun and interesting, diverse perspectives, not just from policy people, but also from commercial real estate, academics. Um, I'll talk more about the recognition that we offer, but get a lot of eyeballs on the projects that are selected for the shortlist in commercial real estate media and also in mainstream media, not just in the sustainability or the green uh, types of, of, of media outlets. And it's about this idea of innovation, as I said, um, thinking about innovation not just in terms of technology, but also in terms of organizational commitment and collaboration. So the categories, energy efficiency, water efficiency, portfolio of the year, which is the, the toughest category, the most prestigious award, looking at multiple buildings and executing projects across a portfolio and continuing that effort over time. Walk the walk is for public buildings. And then innovator of the year, this will be the second year we're doing this. This is recognizing an individual who's made really outstanding contributions to the sustainability industry in their career. Um, a little bit about the criteria. They're, they're similar across the different categories, um, so I won't spend a lot of time on the subsequent slides, and we'll look at the scoring matrix that the judges 
talk about what makes a strong candidate and on the point of, you know, it's not necessarily the biggest building that wins. Um, Museum of Contemporary Art won last year. It's uh, not a huge building, but they achieved some very deep savings through a very innovative approach. So this particular project achieved over 50% energy use reduction um, through uh, comprehensive lighting upgrades and total replacement of the HVAC systems, addition of controls. But what made it really pushed it over the top, I should say, I think um, was the way they did it. They did it without shutting down, without risking damaging the art, because they were able to maintain temperature and humidity levels, which is um, key for a museum and was really the, the driver for the project without shutting down the museum. So very innovative, um, deep savings, and a great example of, of where, you know, really punching above their weight class, a smaller building can win because it was so innovative. So here in terms of criteria for energy efficiency, obviously we're looking at energy. So unit savings and percent savings since taking ownership, and we're looking at portfolio manager to do that and then what did they do in the current year um, on top of that track record. And then the qualitative factors are really important. So alignment with an organization-wide commitment, what are you doing and how, why, and how did the projects that you've done align with that? Um, market context, what we mean by that is what are other peer buildings doing? Um, is there market pressure to uh, be focused on this or not? Um, how does this building compare to its peers? Um, stakeholder engagement means both internal and external. How did the building's team collaborate with others to really drive these deep improvements and execute this innovative approach? Because, uh, and this example is a, a great one, DWP was heavily involved in this project. Um, my team at the LABBC, I'm proud to say, had a big role in this project. Um, and it was through that collaboration that they pulled off such a great project. And then, of course, the contractor and engineering team, um, tremendous. And then innovation in, in terms of technology, um, project execution, financing, funding, or, or other aspects. This one, um, not particularly innovative in terms of the technology per se, um, pretty meat and potato stuff, but very innovative in terms of the execution. So um, my description of those qualitative factors really, you know, carries through to all of the categories. Water efficiency, um, instead of looking at energy, we're looking at water. So uh, if a project has, uh, excuse me, if a building has achieved both energy and water savings, we'll, we'll consider that. That would go into the qualitative factors. So if you're deciding between should I nominate for energy or should I nominate for water, um, I would say, you know, which seems most noteworthy um, in your own opinion. We're happy to talk about that. If you have questions about um, what categories should you go for, what would be the strong, you know, where would you have the strongest chance, we're happy to talk about that and help you craft um, the strongest application possible. And again, the nomination process is very quick. So um, same as with energy, we're looking at unit and percent reductions, but here looking at water. And then the same types of qualitative factors, um, organization-wide commitment, market context, stakeholder engagement, and, and innovation, as I said, in all its uh, different sort of interpolations of what that word can mean. Um, Cedar sinai won last year, tremendous project, saving 28 million gallons of potable water per year by utilizing groundwater that was running under this building. Instead of um, pumping it and uh, treating it and sending it to the storm drain or the sewer, they treated it further and are using it as makeup water in their cooling towers, or their central plant, rather, um, for the campus and, and offsetting their potable water use by, by over 20 million gallons a year. Incredible project. Um, a close second was a much smaller project at 1200 West 7th Street owned by Rising Realty. Also had a groundwater infiltration issue. Um, smaller building, so a smaller scale project, but very innovative in, in its simplicity, um, elegant really, 
um, almost just as simple as running a pipe uh, because they're, in their case, the groundwater was very clean, didn't require a lot of treatment. We actually featured that one um, in a, one of our webinars um, last month in September, a case study. Um, so for about $50,000, they're able to save a million gallons a year and recoup that investment in less than a year. So um, in this case, the, the big project did win. Um, but a close second and got a lot of recognition was a, a similar project just at a, at a smaller scale. So it can go either way and it was the judge's call. Uh, this project was, was so large and so significant that it did win and um, I should have put a picture in here but um, the mayor actually held a press event at Cedar sinai um, talking about this project in the context of the city's local water goals and reducing our dependence on imported water, which uh, is, is really what the situation we're in in Southern California. We don't have our own water. We're pulling it from other places. So we need to make use of every source we have available, be smart with what we have, and this project was a, a, a big visible example of that. Portfolio of the year, uh, really tough to develop, execute, track, communicate energy and water conservation efficiency projects across multiple buildings. Very, very difficult and shows a ton of organization-wide commitment. Um, last year's winner, Brookfield, really exemplifies this. And I think um, not the largest portfolio in terms of the number of buildings. Um, the close second was Douglas Emmett, a higher number of buildings, very significant savings. Um, I think uh, an important part when you get into the finalist evaluation is, is also um, you know, telling the story. And they did a great job of that, and um, their application was, was very thorough in terms of listing out the projects. And again, that's not required at this stage. The nomination stage, we just need two or three lines about basically what kinds of things did you do. Um, but when you get to the, the short list, we will ask for um, some more information. We'll provide examples of, of, uh, of uh, successful past finalists that, that went on to win. Um, so here we're looking at energy and water, and we're also factoring in how many buildings, and, and then how does this align? That organization-wide commitment becomes really even more important when we're looking at the portfolio. So um, very fun category. Um, one other note is that you notice a diversity in terms of the types of buildings that, that won in each category. We don't have separate categories for different types of buildings, and we do that on purpose. We keep the number of categories very limited, really only four, um, because the fifth is for innovator of the year. And that's because it is more interesting, frankly, to compare a multifamily portfolio to an office portfolio to a healthcare portfolio. Um, there are different reasons why um, projects would be innovative in each of those contexts, and I think that's, um, again, what's, what's interesting about this for the judges, um, I think for the participants as well. So um, any type of building is eligible. As I mentioned, a, a cold storage facility, a food processing plant has won in a previous year as well. Walk the walk, this is for public buildings. So this is for federal, state, city-owned buildings um, are in a category of their own. And this is looking at energy and water use um, over time. And then the same qualitative factors that I was talking about for the other categories. Last year's winner, um, LA World Airports, or LAX, uh, tremendous project, um, very huge scale saved 20% in their HVAC by installing their central utility plant. Um, other uh, com competitors last year was LA County with some innovative uh, water efficiency projects and then city buildings have been doing a ton too. So um, this category is for public buildings. If anyone is interested in this, uh, please do reach out to us and we're happy to talk about how this category works. So nominations are open now through the end of the year. Um, again, this is existing buildings, so not new construction. Um, looking at reductions over time. Um, need to be in LADWP, SoCalGas, joint service territory. And 
we have to have done something in 2018. It doesn't have to be a huge capital project, as I mentioned. Um, and I want to underline that demand response or uh, continuous commissioning optimization, that all counts, or tenant engagement, that's all important and, and counts. And then we'll be looking at track record over time as well. So everything that's happened since you took ownership or management of the property, all of it counts. Um, it's a very quick, easy process to nominate. Again, it's just a couple questions, two or three lines, and then we look at the data. Um, and then based on the nominations that come in, we will inform you if you've been selected for the shortlist, um, and that happens in January after the nominations close. And then you'll be asked to provide some additional information shown here. Um, finalists will be asked to list out more specifically what projects you've done, and this is all to help the judges really understand um, more about what makes these projects innovative. How, how comprehensive are they, or how many buildings um, are we talking about? This is an example for energy efficiency project of the year. So again, um, what did you do in the current year, in this case 2018? What did you do uh, before that? And then more questions about, um, you know, what are your goals and how do these projects align with those? This is getting into the soft stuff, the qualitative factors, but it's very important. And I'll get to the, um, the scoring sheet here in a slide or two. Um, talking about engaging stakeholders, as in uh, the MOCA example earlier. How did you collaborate towards these deep savings? Um, and then in what way do you feel that your projects are innovative? You know, tell us, um, what do we need to know about how this project, the origins of it, how did it come together, who was involved, um, what were maybe some hurdles overcome? That's, that's interesting to know as well. And then we ask for some photos. Um, all of this gets used to create a case study. So all finalists receive a really nice case study prepared um, by the LA Chamber of Commerce marketing team. It does a really beautiful job, and I'll show an example of that. Um, and it also is used for the judges, of course, to do their scoring. This is what the scoring matrix looks like uh, for energy efficiency project of the year. It's similar for um, the other categories. And this is where the judges' different vantage points and areas of expertise comes into play. So there's a weighting factor, that blue line across, and we talk th as we're talking through this with the judges, we say, on a, on, a fa on a scale of 1 to 10, how important is the percentage savings? How important is the unit savings? And how important, how important are all of these qualitative factors? So they each individually will think about um, how important relative to one another these, each of these criteria are. And so um, Judge A may say percent savings, that's, that's a 10. That's absolutely the most important and stakeholder engagement, that's not, I don't think that's as important, that's a six. That's fine, each of them have different weighting factors. Then they score each project relative to the other projects on a scale of one to 10, and the scoring sheet will calculate a weighted average and comes up with a winner. And it's really fun, I think, to play with this, uh, this scoring sheet because changing a weighting factor, leaving the scores the same, can change the winner vice versa. So uh, it's very interactive. When the judges have completed their scoring, which happens in February, they send all of their sheets in to us. We tally up the scores and, uh, and come up with the winner. It's always interesting to see how it changes as each judge's scoring sheets come in. In terms of uh, what do you get? Um, finalists, as I mentioned, all get case studies. We do paid advertising a good amount of it through globestreet.com. Um, their emails reach over 30,000 commercial real estate pr professionals. We also collaborate with the Department of Energy. They have a, a good media relations team as well still. Um, and we work with Chamber of Commerce and our own media partners as well. So you get a lot of eyeballs on the finalists. Um, of course, we've got the nice awards and um, we're posting these case studies once they're approved um, online as well. Here's an example of what a case study looks like. It's one we did uh, for Brookfield, last year's Portfolio of the Year. 
Um, so we take all that information that they gave us through uh, the finalist questionnaire and condense that down into a nice front and back case study. Um, there's a quote from ownership there, a quote from their VP of engineering about really their approach, how they go about this, and then talks about highlights from the project and some key statistics, um, really nice piece of collateral that they use in conversations with their tenants and, and um, other stakeholders. And there's trophies. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, all of the finalists are, and all of the nominees for that matter, have done exceptional things. And so uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a nice day. And um, it, these trophies do, I got to say, look pretty good um, in the office or, or in the lobby. So save the date, uh, March 27th of 2019. Same place we always do it, California Endowment. It's a beautiful LEED Platinum facility here in downtown LA. Um, that is the website to find, uh, find out more, basically everything I just said, and uh, the link to nominate is there as well. Um, so just to recap, innovation is not just about technology. This is about people. Um, it's about collaboration and commitment. Um, when we get into the finalists, telling the story is important. The nomination piece, though, is very, very quick. So we encourage you to throw your hat in the ring um, and, uh, and uh, get in the mix. And again, it's not all about 2018. We know that these projects have a, a, a natural cycle. They're phased out over time. So anything um, counts having to do with optimization, ongoing operational improvements, behavioral changes, tenant engagement, that all counts. And it's not always the shiniest, biggest projects that win. As I mentioned, you know, it could be a cold storage facility. Um, it could be, uh, it could be a museum. So nominate today. Again, that's the link there. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you have any questions, please do reach out. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in March.